So you just got drafted into Major Junior Hockey in Canada, better known as the CHL, and now what do you do, what to expect? Welcome back to another AHA video. This is a very hot topic that we often get asked, especially for those 15, 16 year old kids who have no idea what to do with their hockey future. Let me start off by explaining what the CHL is. The CHL is Major Juniors in Canada. It is made up of three leagues, the OHL, which is Ontario, the WHL, Western Hockey League, and the QMJHL. QMJHL is in Quebec. These three leagues are considered semi-professional, semi-pro. The players get paid, roughly. Very, very minimal, barely covers a subway. However, this is the tier one junior hockey in Canada. The OHL and the QMJHL are very similar. They have an import draft, they have a regular draft at 15 and 16 years old. The WHL has what we call a Bantam draft. They can draft players as early as 14 years old for their program for development. These 14 year olds never make the team right away. It is very, very, very rare, only exceptional status, but they do get picked to an organization at an earlier age and develop with that organization sooner than the OHL and the QMJHL. For the purposes of this video, we're going to talk mostly about the OHL and the QMJHL, just in their process. It's the same in WHL, however, it's just at a younger age. So the way it works is starting at 15 years old, your mid AAA year or your M18 AAA, M17 AAA season. Throughout the entire season, scouts are there watching every single game possible, taking notes, analyzing you to see what they think you can do and if you could play at the next level. Come the end of the season, there will be a final list that is published to the public. This list is not set in stone. All it means is what they expect you to go. The central scouting list is not concrete. I can't emphasize that enough. When I was drafted back in 2014, the player who was ranked to come out in the third round came out in the first round, the last pick. These teams don't have the final say on where these players go. They're ranked from the first round all the way till the end of the draft. And then after that, there's a list of extra players that didn't quite make it in the rankings, but are still draft eligible and potential players that a team might want to pick up now you've played you've worked hard all season you've been dedicated you've done the extra work every single day watching videos going to the gym eating well to make sure that you performed as well as possible when that season ends that list comes out and now teams have started their interviews yes i have said it interviews if you're a top prospect the team will call you and set up an in-person interview or a phone call interview or both my first interview was a phone call they asked me three to four questions my second interview was in person they invited me to a local rink you get dressed up in a nice suit you sit down with usually the GM, a couple scouts, and sometimes the assistant coach, and you answer about an hour's worth of questions. The third option they do, they might just send you a questionnaire. 10, 20, 30 questions, as long as they want, just to get some background information on you, just to get to know you a little bit better. The type of interview you have does indicate a little bit how interested the team is. After that comes draft day. It's a very nerve wracking and long day. You're sitting there waiting for your name to get called. You don't know when it'll be. You don't know if that team that spoke to you three times, well, something happened and a player they didn't think was available now is so you dropped in the draft. This happens every year. You might be ranked third overall, you come out 10th. You might be ranked 10th, you come out in the third round. Who knows? Because each team has a list of players they want and they go one by one. He got drafted, he got drafted, he got drafted. All right, it's our turn. Let's take our fourth, our fourth choice. And that's how it works. And every year, there's always a couple surprises. You got to sit there, you got to breathe and let it happen. Whatever happens, happens. You've done everything you can up to that point, And now it's out of your control. So congratulations, you finally got drafted. It's an incredible feeling. Everyone's excited. Mom and dad are probably in tears. Now you got drafted. You are now owned by this team. You have one shot. If you get cut, you can't go to another team. They have to trade you or release you. It's not like if you're a free agent, then you could bounce camp to camp to camp until you find a home. From a day after draft, I'll give you a day to celebrate. day after it is the gym four to five days a week serious lift with great hockey players don't go lift with your friends to go do curls for the girls three times a week okay this is hockey training to get you to the next level take care of what you're eating if your family can afford it sit with an expert that can provide you the proper meal plan to get you to the proper body fat and muscle gain you need in that summer and then skate skate two to three times a week maybe four depending who you are and how active you are and how much you need and prepare yourself get your skills on to the next level when the team is on the ice coach that gets the watch you so coach will make the decision on if you're good enough or not everything is a test everything the way you interact the way you walk around the way you show up if you show up on time you are late walking in at 1 30 you're late 10 minutes before it's business casual you better be business casual these are all details that they're watching especially at that level the best of the best are going to play there if you're in a billet home because sometimes they'll have a team hotel where everybody stays together sometimes they send you straight to a billet house they will see how you interact with the billet they'll ask the billet families they're not taking children they're taking young men when you get drafted to the Q, to the O, or the WHL. Let's go into what camp looks like. These camps are not going to be your standard AAA camps or 
your standard junior A camps. These are going to be run and gun camps. You're going to show up day one. You're going to be on the ice. At the end of the ice session, you're going to have off ice testings. By day one, there's going to be 10 to 15 guys that are going to be cut. That simple. You get one opportunity to show these coaches how good you are. Now, some teams are more lenient. They may let you stay two, three days, but some of them, they want to get to their top 25, top 30 guys really quickly and let them battle it out for the spots. Because when it comes to the exhibition games, those are only the best players that are going to play those to make sure that they have the right guys on the ice, the right guys battling for the spot. After day one, if he hasn't cut you, he already knows that you're going to get cut. Reminder though, if you're going to major junior camp and you want to play in AA, after 48 hours, leave. Go home. You got your experience. You got your tryout. You had a blast. You got that, that exposure. Go home. Do not risk losing your eligibility. When you get cut from major juniors, you have two options. And it depends when you get cut. If you're one of the first ones that get cut, they, they might ask you, where are you planning on playing this year? And that's it. So you either go play junior A or you go back to a AAA program back home. That's what happens. If you're drafted by this team and you get cut, you are not released. They still own your rights and you have to go play at a lower level. If you're a free agent that got invited to camp and you got cut, you can go try out for another major junior team. If you are drafted, you cannot. You have to go play junior A or AAA program. One of the two. If you're cut towards the end of camp, you're one of the last guys, the team might have found a spot for you. They do have programs that they send guys to as an affiliate to make sure that they're getting the proper development for the next season, especially in the OHL. A lot of the OHL cuts get sent to the GOJHL. That decision is based on how valuable you are to the team. And it's usually the coach and the GM that'll make that decision. If you're one of the first cuts, just go play hockey. That's basically what they're going to tell you. Now, the last piece of this is if you get cut and next year you want to make the team, which everyone does, right? You get fuel under you that's saying, you cut me this year, you won't next year. Take the advice. When they're letting you go, they're sending you home. Look at the coach and say, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate the chance to play for you. Please, coach, I would love to play for you someday. What do you want me to work on? What was I missing to be one of your top guys? And he'll be straight with you. Usually these major junior coaches are all business and they'll tell you the truth. You need to be faster. You need to be stronger. You need to hit more. You need to block more shots. You can't let in bad goals, whatever it might be, and go down and work. This is major juniors. You can get traded at any point. We have a player that we represent that went to camp. He was the last one cut. He did unbelievable, but they weren't sure he was ready they sent him back down come christmas time he made the team and he's been dominating ever since so this happens every single year in every major junior league just because you're cut doesn't mean you're never going to play there all it means is that you are missing a few little details to be a consistent player at that level and the coach is going to tell you what it is so go and put in the work now if you do make major juniors you do make the team welcome to junior hockey you are now part of a business unless you're a superstar top three players on the team top three players in the league you're a number on a jersey you have no power if you got drafted by your hometown team you're so excited because you're close to your friends and family you might get traded to the middle of nowhere right beginning of the season during camp until the until day one of the season they can trade so you made the team two days later they get an offer you're shipped out when i was drafted major juniors my second year going to camp i showed up to camp i parked my car in the parking lot as i was pulling out my bag i got a call from the gm saying hey like are you here yet and i said yeah and he turned around and said i apologize we just traded you to another team you're gonna have to hit the road and go there i had just pulled up into the parking lot i got traded come christmas time that break during christmas break when the school semester is over it's trade period these teams that are going for the cup make some big moves to get some big pieces and all the other teams that are rebuilding they go get a lot of young guys to give them experience development to be dominant the year after so there's many many trades that happen every year at christmas time and then same thing at the end of the season because now it's the off season at that draft weekend everybody's trading left and right to get better picks to get better players one of my friends good friends of mine who played triple a with played on eight different teams in three years that's a lot of trades there's one christmas break where he got traded three times without even playing a game he showed up the next day he was traded showed up the next day he was traded it happens part of junior hockey so get ready for this ride because it's not going to be easy but it's a lot of fun this is one of the hot topic videos we get asked a lot but there's other topics that we've talked about that are huge in the hockey world for the future of your son click either of these two videos to decide which one will give you more information based on what you're looking for and as always please don't forget to like and subscribe thank you guys for watching another video have a nice week